Hey, what is up everyone? Great Dansby here. I'm sorry I haven't been posting the last couple days. I've been pretty busy, but right now we're facing the hood LeBron. He's got Ian Kinsler, LeBron James, Reggie Jackson, Matt Holiday, Curtis Granderson, Andrew McCutcheon, um, Jonathan Lucroy, Anthony Rendon, and Garrett Cole on the mound. So we're facing the LeBron hood here. I mean the hood. LeBron, actually, not the LeBron hood. Like I said, so just again, I want to apologize for not posting the last couple days. Been pretty busy, but I got a few minutes to be able to uh, edit and post a video right now. So guess what? That is exactly what I am doing. So we actually have CC Sabathia on the mound this game. Pretty sure this is actually my debut for ranked seasons. As Trey Turner hits a nice little dinky double down the line here. I always take that hard turn going over first just in case something like that happens. And it did. So we got the Grandy Man up right now. And there's a nice little uh, pitch in the dirt, so I'm able to get Trey Turner over, and we're, we're just like that, we're in business here, we already have a runner on third base with less than two outs, actually no outs, and I had a little dinky fly ball, I was kind of late and jammed on that one, didn't want to test it just to start the game off, although I probably would have been safe considering he dropped the damn ball, but the way I figured I got David Wright coming up next as I'm quickly in an 0-2 hole though, I figured David will be able to get this run in at the very least, but... You know, just got to try to stay alive sometimes. You know, it is what it is. You just got to try to put that ball in play. David Wright has fantastic vision and fantastic contact, so I figured, what the hell, we'll give him a chance. He's just able to foul off a few pitches here, just trying to stay alive. And sometimes it's all you need to do in that bat is just fight off pitches and wait for one. You know, that's better. And in this case, I didn't have to wait for one that was better. It was a wild pitch. And I'm able to score the first run of the game just like that without even having to drive him in myself. Did he got an error on that? I think maybe the error was because he didn't try to throw the ball to the pitcher. I don't know what else it could have been because they wouldn't give you one on a pass ball. I'm also pretty sure that was a wild pitch, not a pass ball. So that's the only thing that I'm thinking of is the reason why he uh, got an error here. So CC actually pitched a pretty darn good game if you do say so myself. I'm This CC Sabathia card is beginning to grow on me a little bit. It's a pretty solid card. Like, he doesn't have amazing Ks per nine, but his hits per nine is actually really damn good for a starting pitcher. It's at 85, and I know I have a lot of difficulty actually hitting him. And it's not like I have a, a lot of difficulty squaring up, like, green, good timing, you know, squared up swings. It just, it seems when I do it all the time, I don't get that many hits. So to me, he's a really frustrating player to play against. I don't know if you guys have experienced the same thing, and if you've experienced, you know, good, well-pitched games with him. I don't know, but this is actually probably uh, one of my better games I've had with CC thus far in mean, this little, uh, I think maybe it's not a debut game, I don't even remember, but it's definitely CC's best uh, game I've had with him so far is Melvin Upton Jr., or I call him BJ. BJ Upton's able to beat out that infield singer, and Ian Kinsler, who's been not doing too hot since we've since he's joined the squad, actually gets a nice little uh, opposite field single here, I almost get tagged out at second base, though, i got to be a little more careful on the base path, you know what I'm saying. So we got Jonathan Lucroy coming up, who actually hits this ball really, really well. Look at this play by Granderson. Look at this throw. <laughs> the opposite side of his body is able to do it. I'm almost gunned down here at third base. I thought it was going to be an easy, easy way to get over there. And we got CC coming up, who's a pretty good hitting pitcher. And I checked my swing. I didn't mean to check my swing. That's been happening a lot to me lately. Didn't think I tapped it. I thought I, I went full. I don't know if I would have made contact with that ball anyway. But CC's a pretty solid... Uh, hitting pitcher, and his was weird, he had Curtis Granderson up, and he decides to throw in uh, Steve Finley in the third inning, or the second inning, whatever inning this is right now, pinch hit, I don't know, it's kind of kind of weird, I don't know why he decided to do that, and I have to actually change that line, and I have Melvin Upton in left field, and Granderson in right, I, sh I need to change it, because Melvin is actually, like, 12 speed, fast, as uh, McCutcheon is actually able to get an infield single, very similar to the one that Melvin Upton was able to get for myself. So he's starting to be in business here. He's got a runner on uh, second with uh, nobody out. Well, I mean, with two outs. But I'm able to shut it down so no runs are able to score. So right now we got Trey Turner back up here. He's in the 0-2 hole. And I just want to find something to fight off. And we're able to hit a nice little single down the line here. I don't know who he had at first base. I don't quite remember. But he wasn't able to uh, make that play. And then there's Granderson, who uh, he actually makes a really good... I don't know how the hell he's able to actually throw... Granderson out there. He, it was a very stupid play to throw to second because it was a hit and run. And he's he was lucky enough to get Granderson there at first base. And nothing else came in that inning. But So that is what that is right here. And uh, CC's continuing to just hurl it on the mound right here. We're able to strike out. I believe it was Garrett Cole 
on three pitches. I will see at the end of the game here. I think I wind up having like nine strikeouts with CC. Just a really, really uh, solid game. And Kinsler here, I'm just waiting for that ball down there. This guy was kind of getting a little predictable with his pitches. So I was doing a lot of first strike swinging if he did what I thought he was going to do. And there, that was uh, <laughs> not the best swings, but it kind of worked as like a sacrifice bunt. Actually, no, it didn't because there was two outs. Never mind. So not a really good swing there. That kind of stunk. Probably could have laid off that one. He's getting he's uh, roping a, a single down here with Reggie Jackson. I had Kyle Seeger at first base. Probably why some of these uh, balls in the game weren't able to be fielded. If I had Freddie Freeman in there, they probably would have been fielded. But Freddie Freeman was actually playing. And there's another one. Two in a row. Pretty much the same exact animation, too. Hit hard, don't get me wrong, but I felt one of them should have probably been fielded. Uh, Freddie Freeman was playing down the other day when I recorded this, like two days ago. He was playing down to like an 87, and Seager was playing up to a 92. So that's why I kind of swapped them in and out. It was just lefty for lefty. I wanted to get the guy who had the, uh, the better hitting stats on the day. But generally, Freddie is playing up. So uh, we got McCutcheon up here right now, who is a thorn in my side this game. And a thorn in my side in general. Look at this! I, I knew I'd beat him inside with that fastball, and he, like, sends a laser beam to the opposite field. And I was like, did I miss my spot? Was that not closer to the inside third of the plate? It clearly was right there, and he was just late, and he rocketed it. So I'm not seeing those hits quite as often, but I gotta say, when they do happen, they're still really, really frustrating. And I get that McCutcheon has fantastic stats against left-handers. I, I absolutely get that, but it's still frustrating when that happens. So he's able to tie up the game right now, and I was like, damn it! Damn it, damn it, damn it. But we got Granderson here right now, and I've been looking for that first pitch, a low pitch, you know, pretty much every at-bat, and boom! Boom goes the dynamite. Curtis Granderson in the friendly confines of Yankee Stadium, where he used to play, is able to smash one into the upper deck to give me the lead. So, I was actually a power swing. I don't power swing too often online, especially in games where they feel a little laggy, which in the last few days for me have kind of been feeling like that. So I've been doing less power swinging because I've been swinging and missing a lot more and not squaring stuff up all of a sudden which is very weird to me but that's what's happening so that's why I've uh, been doing a little less power swinging but that time that was power swing I wanted to see if uh, he was giving me exactly what I was looking for and if he was I decided I was gonna smash it he hung it and I bung it I mean he hanged it and I banged it I don't know neither of those sound right but I know if you hang them you bang them and that's exactly <laughs> what Curtis was able to do in that situation so he's actually able to get a hit here with his Ian Kinsler and you're going to see a lot of players having the same cards. I can't wait to get some more cards because I know everybody has these Conquest Rewards cards. Some have the cheaper uh, player epic, uh, I mean team epic rewards. We got we have Reggie Jackson coming up right here. And pretty much the same exact pitch he gave to Curtis Granderson. I did the same exact thing. I was actually early on this one, but it was a power swing. And I was able to smash it up and hit the top of the fence. Probably would have been an out in pretty much any other stadium except for old Yankee Stadium. I was able to get a nice... Home run there, and that was pretty sweet. Another first pitch breaking ball, and I'm ready for it. And we, what do we do? We rope a double down the line with flashback BJ. That's right, BJ, not uh, not Melvin, because back then he was known as BJ. BJ Upton. And we have Kyle Seeger come up, and bam! Kyle Seeger rewards me for putting him in this lineup today with an opposite field three-run shot to finally give me a nice... Little cushion here in the uh, sixth. Is it the sixth inning or the fifth inning? I think it's the sixth inning. Sixth inning, so it is an official game, guys. And, and Lucroy, he joins the hit parade, able to get a nice little uh, single over to right field. I actually feel if he didn't uh, dive there, I probably would have been able to. He probably would have been able to catch it. And that wasn't the best bunt in the world, but I guess he didn't want to risk, you know, get, not me getting it out. So that's what he did right there. And it turned out not to bite him in the ass. Turner made good contact here. You can tell by the the pretty much the swing that he did. I was right on him, but it was just a pop up. It happens. It happens in real life too. You make good contact, and things are just caught sometimes. It is what it is. I, I kind of wish that was more in the gap if it was caught. But whatever. Like I said, certain things you can't control. I think they do need to tweak the hitting a little bit more. I feel that green centered swings or just green swings in general aren't as rewarding as they could be. And stuff like just lates award you with hits way too often, especially hard hits like. In gaps, it's one thing like if you were just late on something on the middle of the plate and it goes, but it's not like it's like on the inside part. There's no right reason you should be able to like rope one, you know, the opposite field like that. If you're if you're just late on something that's inside, I think that's a little uh, a little silly. Give him maybe a hit, maybe a hit like that, but nothing like like that McCutcheon did in the uh, for when he got his first run. That was ridiculous. So he brings in Paul Goldschmidt here, and this is actually where I decide I'm going to take him out. Put Rysel and Glacius in right now, right now because. 
He's actually had, if, if, for those who don't know, um, I used to use him as long relief last year a lot because he had 55 stamina. He still has 55 stamina in this game right now because I'm pretty sure he's converted starter. So because he's the, is that, you can pretty much put him in for two to three innings and he's pretty good to go. And I figured, hey, what the heck, well, that's what we'll do. We'll do that until um, you know the pitcher spot comes up. We can get at least uh, two innings out of him. So that's exactly what we decided to do. And uh, so we're in the ninth inning right now. I'm bringing in, uh, I don't want to waste him, Iglesias, too much, you know, for upcoming games. So we bring in Cody Allen here, who I haven't used in a few games. This is the, the beauty about having all these closures. I don't have any amazing closures, but I have a lot of really good closures. They're all pretty much rated, like, on any given day, like, in, with the, with Inside Edge 89 to, like, 92. So I pretty much just have him in here. Usually it's it's uh, Sun Wang Oh, who I pitch most of the time. But uh, this time I decided to go for Cody Allen because it wasn't a save situation. So we are able to get Steve Finley to fly out there for the uh, second out of the game. And here's Kutch, the bane of my existence, it seems. And we are able to pop, get him to pop out to end the game. All right, guys, do me a favor. If you enjoyed this commentary, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. As CeCe Sabathia here gets the player of the game. I believe he went six and a third innings and he had nine strikeouts. So once again, guys, I hope I catch you soon. Later.